Hello and welcome. Uh, this is Alejandro Rojas. I'm your host, the, the resident UFO expert at Den of Geek. And I'm very excited to have on with me Tony Harris, uh, a journalist and the host of The Proof is Out There. Uh, you have a background in true crime, and, and you can tell from your voice <laughs> that uh, you, you're, you're you know, excellent at that. But that kind of approach to the unknown is a bit novel, and uh, I've been really enjoying it. I've seen the first three episodes. So oh, how have you been enjoying that? And what was your kind of thought process kind of uh, applying your uh, what you traditionally do to this topic? Alejandro, first of all, great to be with you. Um, I was telling you before we got started here, uh, I, I'm, I'm new to your show and new to your content, and but my son loves it. So um, I'm looking forward to, to seeing more of what you do and reading more about what you do. And I'm, I'm just pleased that you've got me on the program. Look, my, my approach has been to this show is to treat it as I would any other journalism assignment. I'm, I, I will tell you, I'm having a lot more fun with it <laughs> than some of the other stories that I've covered. Certainly a lot more fun than, you know, some of the work I've done in true crime, but even the work at CNN and Jazeera 10 years ago, it's funny, 10 years ago, I was in the Middle East and I was covering the Arab Spring when that was the biggest story on the planet. And so, you know, I'm, I'm having a, a, a world of fun with this. And so how do you come to this? If you've got my background, I've actually been talking to the folks at History for a while now, and, and we've been trying to figure out a project to work on together. We did a pilot a couple of years ago for a show that wasn't picked up, and um, and and I think they've been interested in me, and I've been interested in, in what they do. And I, it was clear to me when we did the pilot a couple of years ago um, that they were interested in and expanding their footprint in the space, and, and they wanted to apply, to begin to apply some real kind of journalistic rigor to the space. And, and I was obviously excited about that. If you're a journalist, you know, and what you want to do is take on the biggest stories out there and the biggest questions out there. I mean, is there a bigger question than are we alone in the universe, right? Is, is there a bigger question than tackling some of the myths that have been around for forever? And so what we've done is we've crowdsourced um, a lot of the material that you're familiar with. Sorry about that. That's the doorbell. <laughs> Um, we, we've crowdsourced, you know, a lot of the video that's out there and that's being discussed pretty widely in chat rooms all over the place and all over the world, actually. And we've said, OK, we're going to dive into this. You know, we're going to uh, render a verdict on, on some of this material and we're going to stick by it. We're going to base that verdict on the technology as we know it right now, the science that we know right now, our understanding of um, the physical world as we understand it right now. Uh, with <laughs> the knowledge that that information is always expanding, that understanding is always expanding. And we're going to come to some verdicts on what we're seeing and what you're discussing and uh, what you're debating in chat rooms all over the place. And it's been it's been a kick to do it. Yeah, you've come up with some interesting verdicts, and we will get into that. But, uh, you know, in this field, the media, I kind of got into this out of journalism school just because mm. I felt it was something that was being undercovered. There was a lot of credible stuff here that, that really w the taboo was kind of keeping the field from taking it seriously and, and wow. uh, entering into serious coverage of this field uh, in your career. Yeah. Um, that's have interesting. You seen so that I, evolution? I hope we get to talk about your journey a little bit too, because that's interesting you know, because we're both coming from a similar background and we've both found ourselves in this space. So, you know, I, I'm curious about your own journey. So, <laughs> Well, have you seen that evolution? Um, and, and maybe you could speak to that as to why, uh, from an insider perspective, you know, that the, the media is really warming up to this topic, it seems. Uh, I, I just think that, um, A, it's, it's one of the biggest questions remaining to be answered. Um, there is so serious people uh, in the sciences, uh, serious people are taking a look at this. When you take a look at the life of someone like Jill Tarter, right, who was co-founder of the SETI project, and you, 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 this is a woman serious minded who has devoted, you know, her entire career to this space and understanding, trying to get a better handle on what's in the universe. How many galaxies are we talking about? How many universes are we talking about? Um, 
I, I think if you've got people of that ilk who are working in this space, um, I, I'm not one to keep blinders on about it. I'm not, you know, I was one of those kids who always felt that, you know, we weren't alone on the planet, but, you know, I wasn't going to jump on a soapbox and, and declare that I didn't have the proof, mm -hmm. you know, and, and Sagan is the one, and I'm paraphrasing it probably pretty badly here, you know, if they're big claims, mm -hmm. be big evidence, right? And so I, I think that one of the services we perform on the show, in addition to having, you know, a fair amount of fun, I get to show my personality a bit more than certainly when I was doing the hard news stuff. You know, I think what we're doing is we're trying to find uh, big evidence to big claims. Mm -hmm. and if everyone has got, as you know, as everyone's got a camera and everyone's capturing this stuff, there's a lot of stuff out there to work through. And, and, and maybe one of the services we can provide, and I'm sure this, you would agree with this, is can we whittle away the nonsense? Mm -hmm. can, we get, can we dispense with the nonsense and, and end up with, you know, one, two, five, 100 buckets of, of events, of anomalies that deserve our attention? I mean, I know that that has to fuel what you're doing. Um, and if we can do that and bring these experts to bear, many of whom you know, um, I think that's a real service. Mm -hmm. I think every field you get some professional ribbing going on. Uh, but the difference now is, and, and you've probably experienced that, you know, taking on this project. But the difference now is people in the Senate are paying attention to this. You've got Marco Rubio. You've got Warner out there talking to the press about it. Uh, you know, how do your colleagues react to that? Is it kind of mind blowing? Is everybody kind of, I, I get the sense people are kind of still numbed to that this is happening at this level. I, I, will, I will tell you, I have tried to the best of my ability. And, you know, there is a, a, a downside to, to living my life in journalism and, and following my curiosities the way I do. I have just tried to find a different path, right? And I try to take on stories, and, and and even when I was in the news space, I was I was trying to find a different entry point to tell these stories, and and part of that approach has always been to me is to connect to the extent possible, you know, with where the people are sitting and where the people are, are thinking about this. I'm you know I grew up a poor kid, single parent household in Baltimore, right? You know, I wasn't going to jump on a soapbox and say, I believe, you know, there, there are aliens and UFOs out there, even though that was lurking in the back of my mind. I, I wanted the evidence and my curiosity just sort of led me to try to take on, you know, these big questions. So um, I can remember when I was uh, being asked to join, you know, Jazeera in the Middle East and everybody was calling it jihadi television or whatever else. I knew that the biggest story on the planet was happening there and that we weren't going to cover it at CNN or MSNBC or NBC, ABC, CBS, because we don't dev devote resources to, you know, foreign correspondents to do international reporting. Uh, and I wanted that story. I wanted to understand the people in the middle of that upheaval in the Middle East better in Tunisia and Egypt and in Syria. Right. So I wanted I wanted to go where the action was. And all of my colleagues at the time were saying, you're crazy. You'll never work in American television again. Do you plan on coming back to the States and working again ever? ever or do you plan on staying in the Middle East and, and living out the rest of your career there? And I just wanted to be where the, the story was, where the action was, where um, I, I felt I could enhance my understanding of the world, right? Mm -hmm. So that's something that I took on. And then, and then when I got back and, 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 and I saw the great Paul, um, uh, Paul Azan was working in the true crime space, um, I had made a connection with the folks over at Discovery and ID before I left for the Middle East, and we were working on trying to find a project for me to do. And when I got back, um, true crime was the space. And, you know, when we were doing this six years ago, everyone knew that it was a burgeoning space. And there were people having success, but there weren't many mainstream journalists who were in the true crime space. Um, you know, Paula was there, and she was putting you know, flag in the ground. And at that time, Dateline was kind of transitioning, right, to that space. Uh, but beyond that, there weren't many other people there. And, and you know, to get the opportunity to, to first start with a limited series, Hate in America, which is pretty prescient where we are right now in the country. And we were doing this six years ago. Um, you know, there weren't a lot of people in that space. And we, we launched that limited series and folks from Telemundo and elsewhere um, started working in that space as well. HBO started to, to commission reporting in that space and, and and then to turn that into a series, the, the, the you know, scene of the crime, 
Uh, we did that for two seasons. And, and so I had a real toehold in, in that space. And then the podcasting space. Again, I'm, I'm just looking for opportunities to tell stories, right? And the podcasting space was was beginning to really, you know, to take hold and and find its sea legs. And and, and there weren't a whole lot of journalists in the space when I was working on Monster DC Sniper last year with iHeart and Tenderfoot TV. Uh, but that ended up being a success that I didn't see coming. And I'm really bullish on that space now because I just think that that is going to be a space where people like me are going to find an opportunity to tell in-depth stories. You know that to be true. And now I'm in this space. Now I'm in, you know, the, this this sort of space of, you know, mysterious events, UFOs, aliens, um, what's in the cosmos, right? And, and I guarantee you, I guarantee you more and more people with our background um, are going to find their, their way to this space, particularly mm -hmm. when they see a show like the one I'm working on now that is well thought out, well conceived. The format is solid. Um, we're, we're staking a flag in the ground and saying we're offering a verdict on this video based on the information that we have right now. We're going to own it. If the facts change, we'll come back and we'll cop to the new information. That's that's transparency. That's that's being transparent, Holmes. So <laughs> we're going to lean into it. And, and I, I guarantee you more people with our background are going to find their way to the space. Mm -hmm. You talked about it being fun. And in the first episode, you know, you were able to essentially debunk a lot of those stories. However, there was one you couldn't. And it was a UFO, uh, you know, video from a pilot. And when you. Yeah, well, a pilot of Mexico. When, Exactly. And when you kind of rendered your verdict, I couldn't help but notice it seemed like you had a smile, kind of a twinkle in your eye. Uh, I could see you were having fun I saying totally explain that. Totally can explain that. Look, mm -hmm. it's no fun if you're doing a show that's just debunking. I mean, right. there's too much information out there right now. I mean, there's too much video. Did you pay attention at all to last year and what the military was releasing? Right. Are you, are you paying attention what, to what Congress is talking about? Are you are you are you listening to the responses from Donald Trump and Barack Obama when they're asked about this space? So if you're just doing a debunking show, that gets old quick, right? And and so I I like the aspect of being able to dismiss the stuff that's you know done by really clever people with you know state of the art technology and. They're able to create these deep fakes. Look, we take that's fun too, debunking that. Don't don't get me mm -hmm. wrong. And you know, we're not above, you know, putting on a video that's total garbage so that we can so that we can have some real fun and I can rip on it. I want to have fun too. <laughs> but <laughs> but you know, there are real events out there. There's more information coming. Um, and to be positioned in a place with a show like this, where we can take on the new information as it becomes available. And, um, and I think in many cases kind of confirm some long held beliefs, uh, that's an exciting place to be. I know it has to be for you. Yeah. Well, and especially like you said, you know, I would say, and people get frustrated with us, of course, because I debunk, you know, 90% of the things that come across, but you know, the, the beauty is those very few great ones, like, like the, that Mexico case. And I know you've got a case that you're going to look into, and I know what it is because I'm involved with the organization. And there's a gentleman named Rich Hoffman that you show in the beginning of the show, uh, this Aguadilla case which is another really interesting one and you that episode hasn't aired so you probably can't say much about it but, but I um, know what you think based on knowing what and, and 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 I can add bits and pieces but you can set that you can set that story up and 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 I can join you in that conversation what are your thoughts about that case because it's a really interesting one uh, well, I was intimately involved with the, the investigation. I had some early insight because they were cluing me in so I could kind of uh, write, the, uh, write up the story when they were ready if, with their two-year investigation into this, uh, this organization that is now called the, the SEU, the Scientific Coalition for UAP Research. Um, and what was interesting about it, it was the, uh, the officials, Border Patrol, essentially, that came forward themselves That's and right. said, hey – we sent this video up. They said they didn't know what it was. Uh, why don't you go to some to some civilian UFO researchers? And they did. 
And those researchers were also fascinated. And what was interesting is a lot of, once they came out with their report saying, hey, we can't figure out what this is, right. a lot of very credible people came forward to say, yeah, we can't agree either. Right. And I like to, you know, as journalists, we defer to the expert opinion. And all of the expert opinion I could come across, including a FLIR expert, uh, the, the forward-looking infrared you know, type of video camera that was used okay. with all of these videos that have been released from the government or the military, uh, he couldn't come up with an explanation either and was very convinced that it was something unusual. Uh, Although I, one of the people on your show, Mark D'Antonio, yeah. I know is a little more skeptical about it. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and I think that that's probably the beauty of what we're doing. I mean, there you know, what I get to do is what you get to do is I get to sit in the place of the audience and I, I get to say to Mark and, and um, MJ and other folks who are on the show, I, I get to say, yeah, but what about this? But what about? But what about? Right. And I get to do that constantly in the show. And, and then, you know, kind of collectively. Yeah. Ultimately, we defer to the experts because I'm I, I, I'm still gaining all kinds of knowledge in this space. I mean, I've got to sort of walk away from it and do something else because it can be overwhelming. And you know that, and you know that. So I'm, I'm still, I'm still, I, I remember going to the Middle East and having to, to, to ramp up on my understanding and the knowledge of the region in a way that I thought I'd understood, but didn't. And so now I'm doing the same thing here. And, and, and the beauty of my position is, is, as I mentioned, I get to sit in the, in the place of the audience and say, well, what about this? And, you know, Tim McMillan, what about this? Uh, explain this to me. And and they're great about sharing, as you know, they're great about sharing. And the debate is the thing, right? I mean, we're going to we're going to get some some answers. And and the idea of naming the show The Proof is out there is pretty brilliant, right? We're gonna get you some answers one way or the other. And 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 with this show, we've just taken a lot of the debates that you're having a lot of the debates that are going on online, we're just bringing those debates to television and asking you to, to listen to the experts. We're not telling you you have to believe what we're saying here, but this is the verdict we've come to. And, and I'm getting blasted on Twitter, you know, and, and, but that's the debate. And, and people are really passionate about this. And wouldn't you rather be working in a space where people are, where, are passionate? I would, I mean, yeah. Exactly. Uh, you know, and you're doing more than UFOs. Also, I want to make yeah. sure the audience knows. And one of the other interesting cases in an episode that's already aired where you kind of came down and wow, there's something to this is these people either getting hit by lightning storms or being able wow. to uh, uh, ingest or be electrocuted yes. and survive, walk away from it. Yeah. Yeah. That was really interesting. So, I mean, there is there is the question, what if I told you, <laughs> right? What if I told you that there are people who seem to be able to conduct electricity and not die, <laughs> right? Um, and, and, and that alone leads you down this, on this path that leads you down this rabbit hole. And, and, and now you've got this video and you, you know, we kick it to the experts and, and they're able to come up with what seems to be a, a, a plausible explanation. Again, some of this stuff we we've got to defer, right? And 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 we've got to say that based on what we know right now, as we get more information, because this is what you know. We are limited at this point to what we know about the physical world, what we know about science and technology at this point, right? And then our imaginations are doing other things with what we see. And, and I don't know if you've had this experience, but in, in the first season, I've walked away understanding that in addition to what we know about the physical world, what we know about technology and what we know about science, there's this belief system that, that I'm coming to terms with and, and the way that people believe um, mm -hmm. about what they see and feel and right. And, and, and then in a way, this show kind of holds up the mirror and says, well, why do you believe what you believe? Why does this video impact you in the way that it does. Why is it that the video, why is it that the video of the guy getting executed, electrocuted, right? And falling out of his van. Why is it, and, and not being electrocuted, right? And not dying, right? Why is it that that video is not only intriguing 
to the audience. But I'm talking to people who are asking me in, in, in some of these interviews who are saying to me, my kids are walking in the room checking on me, trying to find out what I'm doing and when I'll be able to play, right? Dad, when are you gonna, mom, when are you gonna be able to come out and play with us? And, and they see these videos. And in particular, that video, and the kids are, wow, what is, and they're sitting and they're watching the show with, with their parent, you know, who is reviewing the, the, the episode that they can ask questions of me. You know, I gotta go, I gotta interview Tony, so let me watch the episode. And the next thing, their, their kids are in the room watching. And that was one of the videos uh, that time and time again in the launch of the show, I've heard that, that, that people have been sitting and watching the show and family members will come in, they will sit down and watch. I didn't think this would be family viewing, but I didn't know what it would be ultimately. So uh, that, that's that been a really provocative video. Gotten a lot of responses. And it's exciting because it's kind of uh, revealing the cutting edge of science. That's, an, uh, that's a, a mystery that is yet to be resolved. I, I hope... I hope, you know, I've got many hopes and wishes for the show. I mean, I, I hope it, it it helps you and others in this in this space. I mean, we're trying to bring a real credible approach to this thing. And and I think that the the, the more success we have in doing that, uh, it, it, it helps you. It helps, you know, the, the dedicated reporters from the Washington Post and the New York Times who are working on this stuff. I mean, there's a Harvard professor about to drop a book, as you know, in a couple of weeks about an event that took place in 2017. I'm so, reading it right now. Okay, <laughs> damn, fair with a brother. So, <laughs> so I, I I hope that our approach to this show, you know, it, it is going to be fun. That you understand that we're not taking ourselves too seriously, but beyond that, um, we're clearing the waters, hopefully, so that we can get down to the nitty gritty of this and take the deep dive that we need to take a, a look into some very specific events and anomalies, and and that's exciting. Mm hmm. Well, I'm we're out of time. I'm very much enjoying the show. It. Yeah, uh, it's, it's fast paced. It's not repetitive like other shows. So people can get in there. You're going to get a ton of information. It's called The Proof is Out There on the History Channel, 10 p.m. on Tuesdays. Thank you so much for joining us. What a pleasure. Thank you, brother. Thank you all. All right. And thank you all, our viewers, for joining us. Uh, stay tuned for future broadcasts on UFOs.